When I first came to California in 1959, I'm 19 years old, stupid kid, 19, and I ended up in Los Angeles. And I ended up in, the, uh, in North Hollywood. And uh, so I used to walk down, this is back in 59, we're talking, what, 53 years ago? Uh, and so I used to walk downtown, uh, which because I only lived about two blocks from town. And so on weekends, I walked downtown. Well, I went down one morning on a Saturday morning and I uh, went to a, a local restaurant and the, and the place was filled with people. And but there was one chair open at the counter. So I sat at the counter and then next to me was a, a girl about my age. She was about 17. I'm 19. So we got to talking and come to find out she only lived a couple blocks from me and, and I only lived a couple blocks in town. She had walked downtown, so had I. So we started meeting in, uh, on, in downtown on weekends. And, uh, we, and so when we walk home, uh, I would get home before she would because she lived two blocks further than me. And so one night she comes over to my place and she says, my father wants to see you. My dad wants to talk to you. And I, you know, I, I, I don't know what to think. I said, I'm not interested to talk to you then. And she said, my, my father's a very interesting man, and he wants to tell you something. He, he wants to talk to you. So I went with her. I don't know. I mean, I, it's just a, my girlfriend I meet downtown, but I don't know anybody. I don't have family. And so while walking up to the house with her, he happened by chance to be coming out the front door. And he saw us, and he motioned for us to come in. The moment I saw him, I got a, 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 a reaction, an involuntary spiritual reaction. I felt something very strong about him. And, and the hair raised up on the back of my neck. I've never had that kind of feeling where it was involuntary. It just happened. And I looked at him, and he just motioned for us to come in. So I knew there was something strange about this man, and but I felt more secure, you know, because it's my girlfriend's father. So we went in, and her younger sister, uh, about 11 years old, and and and, uh, and the two girls, they sat on the floor, and uh, and and uh, the father sat on one end of the sofa, and I sat on the other. The mother was in the kitchen, and that night I never really saw her that night. But uh, so we were talking, and he was asking me how I, if I was working, and how I liked my job, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we we're just chit-chatting and talking. And uh, all of a sudden, he said to me, uh, he said, "Remember back in Florida when your dad built a new back porch? Uh, he, uh, your uncle helped him tear down and build a new back porch." And, uh, and he used green lumber. It, was, it, it smelled funny, the, the lumber did, because it was green lumber. And that scared me. And I didn't want to show tears in front of my, my girlfriend, but he frightened me. And he looked at me, and just very nonchalant, he said, well, do you remember that? And I said, yes, I remember that. And he says, I remember one night you were supposed to be sleeping, and you got up, and you were about eight years old. And you got up and you uh, walked, went out in the back porch. And you sat on that new back porch and it smelled funny because the lumber was green and you picked some of the lumber, you picked some of the wood with your fingers. Remember how you peel some of the wood and was smelling it? And, and you were looking at the moon? Do you remember doing that? And I just looked at him because he was exactly right. And he said to me, uh, you talked to God that night, didn't you? And I just shook my head, yes, I did. And he said, now what did you say to God? And I didn't answer him, I just looked at him. He said, I'll tell you what you said. You said you wanted to do something important with your life, that you wanted your life to have a meaning and you wanted to do something important with your life. Is that what you said? And I looked at him and shook my head, yes, that's what I said. And then he said to me, well, how in the world would I know that? How would I know that? And I told him, I said, I don't know how you know that. And he said, well, was I right? I said, yes, you're right. Well, how would I know that? And I said, I don't know how. And he said, well, I know because we were there. We were right there, but you just didn't see us, did you? 
And I said, I didn't see anyone. He said, that's right, but we were there. And if not, how would I know what happened if I wasn't there? And he said that you've always been interested in uh, secrets and, and UFOs and aliens and all that kind of thing, haven't you? And I said, yes, all my life. And he said, yep, I know. And he said, would you like to see some UFOs up close tonight? And I said, yes, I would. And he said, well, come with me. I can do that for you. And so I got up and walked outside North Hollywood, uh, north, uh, you know, northern suburb of Los Angeles, 1959. And my girlfriend and her sister and myself and him, the four of us walked out in the front yard about midnight. And he looks up into the sky and starts inaudibly talking. He's, his, his mouth is moving, he's talking, but you can't hear him. And then he turns to me and he said, they said they'll be here in about three minutes. They're coming, they'll be here in, a, in just a couple of minutes. And I said, who? He said, to us. He said, you said you wanted to see UFOs tonight, didn't you? I said, yes. He said, well, then wait, they'll be here. They're coming right now <clears throat> in a couple of minutes. And they did. About two or three minutes later, three beautiful, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful, disc-shaped uh, uh, craft came from over the horizon south going north. As it passed over us, it stopped. And there were three of them in a triangle formation. And each one of them were identical, uh, about the same size as the moon, the full moon in the sky. So it wasn't just a light. It was full moon size, three of them, in a triangle formation. And they were, uh, uh, it was looks like a pie cut in six or eight slices. And each slice was a different color. And it was circulating those colors and they were very very vivid colors and uh, it was absolutely beautiful with no sound whatsoever and we stood there looking at them the two girls myself and the father and then after a few moments he started inaudibly talking to them again and he said they said they're going now they're leaving they're going north and they're leaving now but they will see you later and they did. They started to move. And I watched them as they went into the north, and they were gone. And I said, my God, that was beautiful. I said, well, who, what was this I saw? And he said, that's us. We've been here for a long time. He said, uh, so you asked God to let you do something, so we're going to let you do something. We have something for you to do, but it won't come to the very last part of your life. We have something for you to do but it won't come to the last part of your life. And I said, what? And he said, that's not important right now. Just go on out and live your life. We will see to it. You learn what you're supposed to. You will meet who you're supposed to. And when it's time for you to do what we brought you here to do, uh, and I said, what do you mean brought me here? And he said, well, why are you in California? Why did you come to Los Angeles? I said, I don't know. I just had to do it. He said, that's right. We brought you here. So he said, so... When it comes time for you to do what you're supposed to do, you'll know, you'll know what it is. And that won't come for a long time. This will be something at the very last part of your life. We have something for you to do. And that was it. So then he told me, he said, I'm going to start you on your journey tonight. So I'm going to give you a book. I want you to have this book and it will start you on your journey. And uh, he gave me a, a, a book which you can still get today, and any good bookstore still has copies of it today. It's called The Complete Works of Charles Ford. And it's an incredible book, and that's what he gave me. And he said, just go home and study this, just read it, and uh, when it's time for you to do what we brought you here to do, you'll know what it is, so don't worry about it. Well, after that, that was in, uh, that was in early 1959, after that, I started having all kinds of other world, uh, you know, experiences. I mean, peak experiences, strange stuff, meeting strange people, seeing things, uh, experiencing things. So there's no doubt in my mind that there's something going on here and that I was in the presence of, uh, of uh, some sort of a higher intelligence 
though at the time it was just uh, my girlfriend's father, but there's no doubt in my mind that he was not just an ordinary man. And that was not just a, a, you know, by chance happening. I was supposed to meet him. No doubt in my mind about it. Yeah, and that's just one experience. For about a month and a half, two months, uh, I would go over there on weekends. Sometimes I'd go over at night for a little while. And then I'd go on weekends. And sometimes we all, the fa whole family, the mother included, we would take off and we would go about 50 miles north of Los Angeles. And that's back in 59, a long time ago. And and there was we'd go out to the desert, and he would uh, and we'd go out to the desert, and he would tell me all about the different alien life forms who were here, the different ones who were, who have come here, and some of them are enemies with each other, and uh, uh, and and he would tell me about the different uh, the different alien groups that are here, and I was just a kid, 19 year old kid, but I was fascinated with this man who knew so much and, and who could look up into the sky and call for UFOs and they show up. One day I went over, one morning I went over there on a Saturday morning to see them and they were gone. The house was wide open, all the doors are wide open and they moved and I never saw them again, ever. My girlfriend didn't tell me she was leaving. Nobody said anything. They were just gone forever. <laughs>